<laughs> Welcome along, guys, to our new. This is going to be our new uh, new feature. New, new feature. feature. At the moment, it's called talking bikes, as in talking. But there could be a better name for this. So if you guys can give anything which is better, but it's going to be a semi-monthly, four to six weekly chat about new bike news. And more importantly, I think, to answer some of your questions, because I get loads of questions, obviously, on the videos, loads of questions from Facebook, loads of questions from Instagram. I can't answer them all. It's a full-time job to keep on top of them. So this is a great little uh, Good chance sort of to arena, it. yeah, to talk about questions and, and, and answer some of those. So uh, we've got some questions. We've got some news to talk about. Yep. And uh, let's get cracking. Sounds good. Chopsy, roll the intro. So first of all, I think we need a quick little drinkies. Because, quick drink. Uh, nothing. Cheers, buddy. Cheers. I'm on the uh, margaritas. <laughs> <laughs> Cocktails. Very debonair. <laughs> I've got the fluorescent sign up there. I should have changed it to Cocktails and Dreams. <laughs> Not Lamb Jocks Ride. Still blinking. We could set the LEDs on full flash mode, full, <laughs> full disco mode. <laughs> So well, it's nice to be here in the garage. Look at well, it, it's not even yeah. a garage, is it really? It's, it's a it's, studio. <laughs> it's a proper studio. <laughs> Mrs. Chop saw it today and she's like, well, if you just get a bed in here, you can move in. <laughs> <laughs> it is amazing. Honestly, I've not been back since it was like Christmas, January time, wasn't yeah, it? Yeah, yeah, yeah. And it was good then. It looks, it really does it's, look. It's, it's so nice. It, I can't so believe nice. how well it's come out. Yeah. Sorry it's, about the coat though, because it's not that warm. Well, I've had the heat in all the afternoon. On, but it's a he's, little he's cold. Still got his coat. He's I'll got the cravat, haven't I? Got no, the no cravat. I should have worn a cravat. <laughs> yeah, I said I would, didn't I? <laughs> First of all, to talk about generic bike news, what's new, what's new to the press, and something which grabbed my attention was the KTM have officially announced they're bringing out the 890 SMT. Yeah. So this is going to be, they had the old 990, didn't they? The old 990. Yeah, it's a while ago in, now, isn't it? Was, yeah, that was a yeah, while ago. It's a while ago. Before my sort of time almost, when yeah. I was out of bikes. It wasn't yeah. a bike I've ever ridden or no. been no. that aware of. Yeah. But they've got a new, probably based on the 890 motor. There's some, apparently there's some. It is discussions of what tune it's going to have though. Well, so it, whether it's got the, the Duke engine, Duke R, exactly. or whether it's the Adventure engine. Exactly. Yeah. So it's either basically 100 horsepower, or, or it's going to be 120 ish. Or I think the Duke road bike's got about 115 or yeah. 110, 115. Yeah, yeah. So hopefully it's got obviously the R tune and that'll, yeah. be, that'll be incredible. It's going to be good anyway, I think. Yeah. I, you know, quite niche, but quite good, isn't yeah. it? Yeah. yeah. Sort of 17 inch wheels, road tires. It's going to be a bit of a hooligan machine, I think. I, I think it's going to be obviously a bit like, because you've got like the Tracer, haven't you? You've yeah. got like the uh, BMW F900, is it? The, yeah. yeah, the road bike. But I think this is going to have a bit more poke and yeah. ready to race, hopefully. And probably suspension that allows for a little bit more yeah. um, tomfoolery. <laughs> <laughs> you know, where you can probably be a little bit more abusive with it, I yeah. would imagine. KTM are pretty strong in that area, aren't they? Yeah. So it sounds good. I was reading about it today and I must admit, I thought, that sounds like it could be seriously um, we're good fun. We're not adventure bike people, you know. Never have no. been. We've always said, you know, not. I mean, we, there's not. I've got five bikes now. There's not one adventure bike in, no, in the fleet. It, but that exactly. Mm. And that's not to say that. Well, from my point of view, I can't speak for you, but I'm not anti-adventure bikes. They're just not something that have made a lot of sense to me for the sort of riding that I do. Um, and actually, I think we're going to come onto some viewer questions later about adventure bikes versus touring bikes and. You know, I've got some thoughts on that. It'd be quite yeah, an interesting thing yeah, just yeah. to kick around for a yeah, few minutes, yeah. won't it, really? Um, so, but yeah, I think the 890, going back to that, is going to be, it's it, going to be good. And it's, I think, out this year, isn't I it? Think, I think uh, it's a launch, April, a launch there, in there's April. There's a bit more information about it, isn't there? The launch in April, they've released, yeah. KTM have released some sort of images, but there's no real detail. No. I don't think there's any even a proper image of the bike. I don't think there's even proper pictures of the bike. Is no, there? Not it's like, um, think... spy shots, I think, isn't spy, it? Yeah, yeah, spy shots. Yeah, yeah exactly, yeah. But anyway, should be good. Should be good, and apparently, maybe, they may be bringing the Nuda back as well. So Not they, Husky. Husqvarna, Husqvarna may be bringing the Nuda Which is back. them, because it's KTM. Which is, yeah, it's it'll, be, them, it'll be the yeah. same bike, but with Husqvarna. Yeah. I hope they do, Actually. and I guess, I mean, I've read the sort of, there's not that much about it online, is no, there? No, it's not. But no. what you do read, it's again going to be the 890 engine, yeah, which kind of yeah. makes sense because it was yeah. a Nuda 900 with the BMW Rotax engine, yeah. I think, previously, wasn't it? Yeah. And that was a bike that I loved. Yeah, I've never ridden one. Have you I've, ever ridden one? I've never ridden uh, one. I've... It's a bike that I love, and it's a bike that I missed yeah. when it was out. I sort yeah. of just overlooked it 
really annoyingly, they hold their money amazingly, <laughs> they do, don't they? they? Do, yeah. They really hold their money, and I think they look like a brilliant, brilliant road bike. So if the new one, if they get it right, if they do it, and they get it right, it I could think be it, could, it could be amazing. I mean, if, if any of you guys have got one of these, I'd love to have a go on. What, the classic Nuda? Yeah, the classic oh, Nuda. Definitely. The cla yeah, yeah. I mean, great comparison, wouldn't it? The classic Nuda versus the, the, the new one. The new one, if it comes out, yeah, yeah, it'd yeah. be amazing, yeah. So if anyone's got one, maybe let us know in the comments because uh, I'd That'd love to cool. have a spin on it. Because yeah. again, that's one of the bikes you see and you think, oh, yeah. that just looks right. It seems it's got the right power, the right weight. It's yeah. like a lot right of Right proportions, fun, they sound amazing with an open pipe, don't they? The, yeah. the classic yeah. ones, yeah, 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 yeah. sounds yeah, really absolutely. nice. So what's next then, John? So we're going to so, talk so, about some of your loyal viewers. I put out a post on Instagram and Facebook yesterday, I think it was, asking for people to supply some questions to us. So, so you've teed everyone up on Instagram that this is happening. Up, got them going. Yeah. And they, we've got, well, we've got three pages worth of questions. Three pages so of questions. We're not going to be able to do them all, but we can, we can have we've a go. We've gone through and, and you've selected some. Okay, okay, fine. Yeah. So first one is from Pete Jackson. Okay. And he's asking me, any chance of Chops getting an ACU license and having some fun racing? Good question. I'd, I'd love to do that, but I just haven't got time. I, I've got a day job. I'm doing this YouTube thing with, with one video a week. To go and go, it's such a commitment it is. to go racing and the, the monetary commitment, the time commitment more than anything. It's a I'm too old it's, as it, well. It's a massive thing. Yeah. You know, you've got a race meeting a month. Yeah. If you, well, you, well, actually, just before you, Greg is actually your son, Alex, yeah. He's going racing this season, isn't he? He is, yeah. So first, you are first, yeah. going into this. Yeah. He's got his ACU end of last year, was it, he did it? Yeah, I'm team manager slash team disaster <laughs> slash team mechanic slash T-boy gopher. General dog's body. General dog's body. <laughs> But it's a massive commitment. It fills me with terror, actually. Because, and one of the reasons I've not raced, aside from the fact that I don't have any talent, I'm not quick enough, <laughs> is the fact that I can't be bothered personally with the massive commitment and all the flaffery that goes with it. Yeah, and there's a massive yeah. amount of flaffery. Yeah. And so Alex is doing it. And so now yeah. you've got the flaffery without the fun of actually I've got none of the fun, of all, fun all, all, the all of the drawbacks, exactly. <laughs> um, but you know, you've got a weekend, basically a weekend meeting, a race meeting a month. Yeah. Uh, throughout the season. Is he doing and, all of them then? Is he doing a well, he's season? he's striving to. He might miss a couple, you know, mid-summer. What what's he actually racing in? What, what? He's in the um, Rookie 600 class. Okay. Yeah. Uh, with no limits. Right. Yeah. And um, so it's going to be interesting. Yeah. But it's all, the, it's all the work that goes with it. And of course, you've got the race weekend itself, which obviously takes a hell of a lot of time up for me. Yeah. You've got to travel all over the country. So yeah. there's a lot of commuting and traveling and all the rest of it. And then in between all of the meetings, of course, there's a lot of maintenance, a lot of work, a lot of prep, a lot of everything that goes on. So um, I think it answers your question to your, to your this subscriber. Is, this is why I'm this not doing why it. Not doing it. So I'm we'll see how it goes on. And you know, yeah. may, maybe if it's of interest and you want it on your channel, well, we could perhaps yeah, feature yeah, maybe an occasional do... weekend and I can tell you that, how it's that's going. That's a and, very good idea. Yeah, and that'd be could, quite good. And We could almost do like a little video diary. We could do a diary and I thought maybe I could yeah. just have a chat and you can see me looking glum and depressed <laughs> and angry and abused <laughs> and everything else. And then of course, you know, there's the potential for incidents, isn't yeah, there? Do you know, which yeah, I think, yeah. I mean, looking at the first meet actually for Alex, which is in two weeks time, actually, at is the it? moment, the forecast looks very precarious for rain. <laughs> so, you know, a wet meeting in my humble opinion. Because he's only carry... ridden the bike once, isn't Yeah, he? exactly. So he's got a brand, you know, a new bike, obviously all race prepared and, you know, it's nearly ready to go now. So we did a bit of a shakedown a couple of weeks ago um, at uh, Mallory Park. So that, and that went fine, everything was okay. But um, yeah, I think a, a wet race for the first race is oh going to be pretty grim I mean, if a, that happens. A, so. As a parent sort of thing, it's, I mean, I know people yeah. go through it all the time, don't they? But yeah, exactly. It's tough though, isn't it? It's, it's tough. tough as a parent. It's, it's tough. tough. It'll be fine. But anyway, so there you go. So that's why you're not doing it. I'm not doing it, but there we go. Greg, Greg, Alex is going to be doing it. So uh, yeah, I think a little video diary. Maybe. We'll yeah, do that. Yeah, yeah. could work yeah, out quite, no, yeah, exactly. quite, quite yeah, fun. Yeah, definitely. Ray Chitty has asked, hi Chopsy, how long have you known Greg and how did you meet? Now, this is something we spoke about in our, it was that booster video, wasn't it? When we had the two yeah, boosters was, yeah. and we went to Wales and yeah. we, had, we sort of covered this, but Greg is actually my brother-in-law. But not only that, we've known each other since we were 15, probably about 14, 15. A long time. We, we lived on Hayding Island. Time. We're now, only 25, so it's not that long. <laughs> yeah, it's not that, not that long ago. <laughs> And then, no, uh, of course, it's, it's been years, we had bikes back then, didn't we? So yeah. before, he was my brother-in-law, and he's married to Mrs. Chops' sister. Yeah. So, yeah. So but that's we, not we, how we met. So we, we knew each other before 
So we ended yeah, up, yeah, 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 exactly. we, we married some sisters. <laughs> um, so we've ended up brothers and uh, brother-in-laws, but we knew each other before yeah. that. So a long time, yeah. and actually, you know, it was you know we were biking when we were literally teenagers, weren't yeah, we? Just yeah. messing around, and, and exactly. So yeah. that's so how we know each other. So we've a long known time. each other a long time, at yeah. least a good six years, isn't it? Yeah, a good six years. <laughs> yeah. Plus another. So we want some 25. comments. We're a very similar age, obviously. Who's aged the best? That's a fair. Oh, don't go there. <laughs> don't, don't, don't go that route. Don't go that route. <laughs> don't go. <laughs> I'm just getting glasses out. There. I need my glasses. Wait, 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 yeah. My broken glasses. <laughs> so next one, Scott Sutherland. What is the one bike you really wanted but got away from you? Go on, you, you first on this one. For me, it is, I think, um, and there's probably a few, but I think it is the Husqvarna Nuda, it's the Nuda. 900, the BMW yeah, yeah, engine yeah. or Ro yeah, Rotax, yeah. Rotax engine. Yeah, yeah, I think so. It was one of those bikes that I really noticed and fell in love with probably at the time that they stopped manufacturing it. And I so, completely missed it as a bike. When did they come out? When did they come out? I, I honestly can't remember. No. I'm going to say it was between 2000 and 2010, I would have said. So probably about late 2008, yeah. something like that. But, but you'll get loads of comments. Yeah, I'm yeah, sure saying that's wrong. Yeah, yeah. I don't recall, but it was, it was at least 10, 12 years ago. Yeah, yeah. I missed it and then sort of kicked myself for missing it because yeah. It looks like a really, really fast, amazingly fun road bike that would definitely appeal to me. Yeah, and you yeah. know, well, it's, it's super moto. It's super moto y, yeah, but a bit faster. Yeah. Just it just looks like a really, really good bike to own. And you know, anyone that's owned them, they all seem to absolutely love them for good reason, I'm sure. And so that that would be my choice. What about you? Bike uh, that got away. Bike that got away. Well, I unlike you, you've always had bikes, haven't you? Yeah. Since we were sixteen, you've had a, you've had you've had bikes. I yeah. had a sort of ten year period where I didn't have bikes. Yeah. And I remember when you got the original R1, the yeah. 98 R1, yeah. in the blue, I think it, it was. It was blue, yeah. blue, yeah. I've actually got some video. I had an old video camera, and I've got, still got some video. <laughs> got we some went video. out of the car with the video yeah. camera view on the blue R1. And uh, yeah, I do, I do like that, that was original the bike. R1. Yeah. And I know I've just bought the GSX, the uh, ZXR, sorry. But that, that I would quite fancy the yeah. original R1 as well. But there yeah. again, they're going up in money, aren't they now? The R1. So it was an amazing, the, the original R1, yeah. and it was it, the it was, original. It moved the game on, didn't it? it oh, at the time it did. Yeah. And, and I'd you ha had the blade, didn't you? I you had the blade were... immediately before it, yeah. and so I had the 900 blade. Was, and then, was that a 96, 97? Because 98, the, the R1 came out. Yeah, so it? it must have been 96, 97, I had the fire yeah. blade, which was a good bike. You had the one like I had with the, the, uh, the orange. Yeah, yeah bron the orange, bronzy colour. Yeah, and the fire blade was good. But the R1 was just, you know, the R1 was to the blade what the blade was to everything else when the blade was first yeah, launched, yeah. wasn't it? It yeah, was sort yeah. of a game changer again. Yeah. And it, it, the original R1 was amazing. Yeah. It was it was pretty flighty. It was a bit feisty, was it? Oh, it was flighty. <laughs> I mean, you know, it was it was sort of a bit wheelie-ish off the power, but it was amazing. But I loved yeah, it. Yeah, yeah. yeah, and I did quite a lot of miles on the R1 that I had. Did and in you? fact, the only reason I sold it um, when I did sell it was because Sam and I moved to the states. Uh, yeah, and I basically oh, just cleared, I cleared yeah, the decks and I sold it back in 2000 just before I moved to right. America. Okay. So I moved to America with, with, with work yeah, yeah, yeah. and I just sort of cleared the decks. Yeah. You know, I didn't want to keep a bike. No, someone someone would have to store yeah, it and, yeah, yeah. you know, it'd be a pain. So that was the only reason I got rid of it. Yeah, it was, that's, it was good. that's the one for me. Yeah. I, I think yeah. it just looks right, that bike. Yeah. I think the proportions of it, the styling yeah, yeah. of it. Yeah, I think yeah, even good. today it, it looks It looks nice, good. I mean, it amazes me how dated it looks now. Oh, but it's still, I think, I think, it's it, I think it does look dated, you? but I think I it looks, think but it, it looks good. good, but a bit dated. Do but you? in in the day when it was first launched, yeah, yeah. I was just like, particularly in the blue, yeah. I was like, oh my god, that looks unbelievably amazing. <laughs> I've got to have one of those bikes. Uh, Lee Thompson says about fuel, E5 or E10 or supermarket or BP Shell, etc. Okay. Well, well, apparently, this I think it's the Shell Optim. Is it Shell Optimax? Or is it Something Shell like V-Power? The V-Power? No, the v, v -power. It's, it's V-Power. It's Shell, Shell V-Power. That doesn't have any of the ethanol in it at all. Right. So the V-Power is not even... Even though it says E5 on the pump... It's, not, e, what, to, it's not even E5. It's not even it's E5. It's better than E5. It's, it's better than E5. It's got it's, nothing in it at all. Right. Apparently, so I've heard. Um, I mean, we both... Put, Where have you heard that? I can't remember where I heard that now. Okay. But it's in the back of my mind somewhere. Yeah. But I'm sure that's the case. It doesn't have any ethanol in it at all. So yeah. ideally... Because well, I think, yeah, E5, definitely E5. Yeah. All my bikes, when I'm out, I run E5. Oh, definitely. Unless you can't get it. You know, if you go somewhere that hasn't got it and you need to fill up, you've got yeah, to fill up. Definitely. It? Yeah. Um, but uh, yeah, I'm definitely E5. But if up I'm, until this point, though, we haven't been snobs around not going to supermarkets, have we? No, so, no, we're still going so, to supermarkets. Yeah, yeah no, I'll go to a supermarket. I've, I've, I've the weird thing, actually, is in the last few months, and obviously this is 
March 2023. Yeah. Historically, supermarkets were cheaper, yeah. but they're not anymore. No. Certainly in the south of England, the the, the main garages like really? Shell, yeah, not, noticed that. Are they not still really not Shell, Esso, the big garages and the big um, oh. yeah, they're the, they're very very similar. Yeah, yeah. Okay. But um, so if I you know now at the moment the price being virtually the same, I would go to Shell yeah, if yeah, their yeah. Well, Shell, premium is Shell, got Shell no ethanol is at all. Apparently no, even though it says E5 on the pump, because I have to yeah. say that it's not anything in it. I think my worry with the cheaper fuel, the E10, is just it's probably less about riding it, but if you don't ride the bike yeah, for quite a while. Is storing it, or if you've got a month or six weeks where you're not using it, it's not meant to be yeah, brilliant, yeah, is it? it for it a lot of it breaks down and the water forms in the bottom of it. I mean, I, exactly. when I lay my bikes up, yeah, I, I'd have E5 and Definitely. fill them up and leave them all winter. Don't start them, but. and you want them full so there's no moisture in the tank, then do you? Because yeah, there's no exactly. room for the moisture, there's no, to get no in rush coming in, exactly. but yeah, definitely E5. If I want to. If I'm a bike I've borrowed from somebody, then yeah, I chuck the cheap yeah. stuff in it. <laughs> it's weird that e, E10 came in like it did. It seemed to be a little bit under the radar, yeah. didn't it? I think well, that was a bo- going E15. Was it's it a Boris be... Johnson special? Probably. Just, not that I want to go into politics, not interested in politics <laughs> at all. But, but I think this, it's going to be 20 coming in all Really? That's down the line, yeah. Blimey. It's all coming, in it? It'll be put, putting water in your tank, but it's emails yeah. just fill out from the tap. Next one is Andy Black. If you could own any bike, what would it be? What do you own that you couldn't? He's got multiple questions here, Andy. You've been a bit naughty. You've got multiple questions. So first of all, if you could own any bike, what would it be? For me, it would be the RCV road bike they brought out, the Honda Special Edition, limited numbers, the RCV one, whatever, whatever it is. Right, the MotoGP bike. The MotoGP bike for, for the road. For the road. Out, yeah. yeah. Oh, yeah they're 20, it was one up there we showed you the other week. 20 yeah. grand, completely ridiculous. But. 20? 20,000. Sorry, 200,000. <laughs> Add a zero for that. Add a zero. 20,000? Well, that I'll sounds all right. Bargain. Yeah. No, 200k. So right. a, bit, a bit pricey. But, but, but okay, so forgetting that then, what about something more normal? Is that, is that you know? Yeah, but I think anything more normal, probably the H2 was my dream bike before. So there's nothing else? Well, no, as a dream machine, yeah. as a dream machine, which isn't completely 200k out, out yeah. the realms of ach- okay. achievable. I yeah. quite, I'd like a Ducati Pikes Peak as well, the new V4 yeah, yeah. Pikes Peak. That'd be nice. If I sold the H2, unfortunately, Ducati don't have it, you can't even get on one of those. No. But I, I think that'd be yeah. a brilliant bike. But yeah, if it's, if it's money, no object, it's one of those for me. Okay. RCV. For me, I'd like a Rocket 3 Triumph. Oh, yeah. With that supercharger kit oh, installed. Oh, that, that TT, TTS, is it? Yeah. The supercharger? 350 that, horsepower that's, rocket that, three. That, that, that is something that I haven't actually completely outruled. Well, that's, um, that, that's not unachievable, that, No, though. exactly. But that, that, for me, is something I've got half an eye on as a, a sort of an older age person that would like a bike to keep forever. Cause, Could we get a deal on two? I don't know. I hope so. So <laughs> that, that's something... Yeah, yeah you said that... Yeah. It's not the RCV. Because it's still an obscene amount of money, but that really appeals to me. Just having something that's just really unique. It just looks amazing. Bonkers. Bonkers. Fun. Yeah. The other dream bike, which I don't think I'll ever do, but I'd like to do it, is there is a company, and the name escapes me now, in Canada that make a 500 single ah, two-stroke. Yeah, yeah. And it goes into an EXC, a KTM EXC 300 enduro bike that you can then yeah, convert to yeah, supermoto. Yeah, yeah. I've seen these. I think... Um... TT Laser, 99 Laser. Okay. The two fast media guys have done that engine in a uh, an off-road bike, yeah. in, in a motocross bike. Okay, yeah. fine. So a it's an, it's an amazing engine. It's brand new engine, custom made. Comes with all the bracketry, all of the yeah, all of the bits that you yeah. need to put it into the 300 frame. Oh. And that, for me, you may or may not have seen my Supermoto build project that I did a couple of years, a couple of three years ago, yeah, where we yeah. converted the 300 TPI into a Supermoto. That would be yeah. the ultimate Supermoto. One of me. those and the Rocket Three and the supercharged Rocket Three. It, exactly. Exactly. What complete, else, what else no, you need? completely different. Yeah, so a two-stroke smoker that's just bonkers, and then a, a bonkers, bonkers rocket three. That would be. But what you're going to have is your sensible bike, though. G six R thousand. No, I don't know, but there'd be things that it'd just be so much fun. Just and something completely different. Oh, your your answer is better than mine. Oh, I want go. that as well. <laughs> Forget that. I want that. <laughs> Next one's from Peter Hurd. Did either of you have a motorcycle from your past that truly cemented your love of motorcycles? Mine was the Honda XR75 from the 70s. Mm, that's a good that's question. not you saying that, that's the question. No, yeah, no, sorry. Yeah, that's right. the question for that's Peter. The question. That's Peter. So I think, I think for me, when I got 
my first bike. I think the first bike I rode, an MBX125 was, was my first bike. Was it really? Yeah. No, it wasn't. Yeah, it was. No, you had a MTX80 before that? No, it was the MTX125 was the first one. That was after that. I had that after the... Uh... You had the 80 after an RT5? Yeah. Did you? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, okay. I think so. <laughs> Did you? <laughs> no, you said that. You, you had an orange MTX80? No, no, it was an, it was an, it was an M, M, MBX, sorry, MBX50. 50? 50. 50. That's why you're throwing me off. You're throwing me off. You had an MBX50? MBX50. MBX that, was, that was my first So that bike. cemented it for you, the 50? Yeah, as soon as you ride a motorcycle, you're yeah. like, this is incredible. Same for me. I yeah. had a Kawasaki AR50. I in lime green. green. green Same green as the Kawasaki ZXR. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And yeah, I mean, I, I was really, really. Did you big bore that at some point. I did big bore that. Yeah, I, I'm, it I'm, blew up. Well, it didn't <laughs> blow up. It, blew it up. became unwell. <laughs> <laughs> it became unwell. I wanted a 65 cc big bore kit for it, but I couldn't get one. And this is obviously way before the times of yeah. the internet and eBay yeah, and yeah. everything else. This is going back. This is going back a long time. So I got ended up getting a a 90 cc big bore kit for it. Right. which was really designed for an AR80 ah, that they made right. and you could take it to a 90. Right. But I put the 90 kit on a 50 right. and it was very fast for a 50 afterwards, for but, not for <laughs> <laughs> but not for what long. But not for long. What happened there? Did it just blow up? Or the big ends it, went. Did it? Yeah, it couldn't take the, the uh, power. The power. And I, don't, I don't think any of it liked it really. I think the gearbox was struggling. It was just too much power for it really. So it just sort of got slower and slower progressively. Oh, and, Jesus. So you, but, saw, you sidestepped the 60 kit and went straight for the 90. 90. And it was a nightmare because it didn't really fit. It wasn't designed for it and the head had problems and it was all a bit of a nightmare. But in answer to the question, it was that bike. But I, was, I, I knew I was going to get into bikes even before that because I used to look at people that had bikes when I was 13, 14 and just thought, you want one. It's just, yeah, you know, you just take an interest. Like people that are into sailing, yeah. they like boats. It was just, I think it's, it's yeah. your parents and, you know, my dad had bikes, yeah. my uncle raced. Exactly, you, know. you just have an interest, don't you? Yeah, exactly. exactly. It's, it's just in your blood, isn't yeah, it, I think? Yeah, I think so. Okay, this is a good one. That GSX-R1000, that's, that's, the, that's the guy who's uh, posed the question. The death of the GSX R thousand and your opinion surrounding it. So we both own GSX Rs, don't we? Oh, I've got the K eight. I've had uh, two thousand and uh, ooh, blimey, two thousand seventeen, the original one, the new original new one, two thousand seventeen model, which I did a lot of mods to. Yeah. You've obviously got the the last of the GSX R thousand. I mean, it is. I mean, I couldn't believe it when they when no. they you know when we had the chat. On one of those videos talking about, or for this year, I bet they changed the dash to the new TFT. I all. thought it would be, yeah, chat? the, the GSX S1000 yeah. TFT dash. Yeah, I, thought it, I thought they'd update it, it and, then and it, it might be the same bike, yeah. generally then, speaking, but they they just dropped it's, it. It's gone. So well, yeah, it's, it's gone from the UK market anyway. So the question is, what's our opinion on it? So I'm disappointed, yeah. actually, really disappointed. I think it's a bit of a strange decision, really. Well, I, I'm hoping it will be back, you know, yeah. in a couple of years' time, there'll be a Euro 6 version or whatever it's yeah. going to be then. Do you, think that's, do you think that's likely? I don't know. Yeah, I can't, I can't see it being gone for good. Really? I think it'll be back. Do you? I think, it, I think they're probably working on something now. Yeah. I, well, I just but they, but they gave up MotoGP and they stopped the 1,000. Do you not think yeah, it's all part of... You think they're completely unlinked? I think they'll come around and, and there'll, be, there'll be something. Yeah, like maybe. To, maybe. The thought of it completely gone, that's, yeah. that's almost unthinkable. It is. The but in answer to the question, I'm obviously disappointed. However, selfishly... I was. I feel quite smug. <laughs> you got one of the last ones. Yeah, because I didn't buy it knowing that it would be no, one of the last no, ones. Yeah, I bought yeah. it uh, in 2021, so it was about October, September, October 2021 that I bought it, and you know I've got the anniversary version. Yeah, it's the R the version, R, the and that was at a time when you could still get the non-R version. Yeah, yeah. And it's an amazing bike. Yeah. It's such a and now such a good road now bike. Now all of a sudden there's loads of interest in it. There's loads of interest, it? exactly. And actually, I got mine serviced uh, a week or so ago at. A Suzuki main dealer, you know, and they were all sort of plucking around it saying, oh, what a great decision to buy it. The valleys are only going to go up. They're getting yeah, loads of interest as well. It's weird, really? isn't it? Like, Once something goes, everyone wants one, which, yeah. which I'm the same, really. buying it in the same first place, it wouldn't still exactly. be here, So, you know? yeah, so relieved I got one. Yeah. Quite it, depressed it, that it's it is, gone. I, I, if, yeah. I, if it's not coming back, I'm absolutely gutted. I, I, my, in the back of my mind, I'm thinking, a couple of years' time, there'll be a new version. Yeah. That's, well, what I, that's what we'll I'm see. thinking. We'll but if it's gone for good, then that, Depressing. That, that's really yeah. bad. This is from uh, Ultra Vinyl UK. How about what sort of psychopath puts more than a couple of drops of tea, a couple of drops of milk in their tea? I agree. Well, well what's wrong with milky tea? Milky tea, beautiful. As long as you're not using that full. No, you're weird though. I no, put full fat not, milk in tea, no, and you said that, that no. it's too creamy, you so I use skimmed milk but you put can't cream put on full, top. 
Full That's what fat you said. Full fat just doesn't guarantee. It so does. It's got to be semi skim No, full fat milk, no, which no. isn't that fatty. No. You must have put double cream in. No. <laughs> <laughs> you must have put double cream in. We'll leave it there. Uh, we'll I, leave it's it there. got to be milky, but it's got to be, uh, it's got to be semi skimmed. It's got to be semi skimmed. Okay, this is a good one from John Patrick GP. Rocket 3R or New Ducati V4 Diavel? <laughs> I can't, I can't call it. I, I mean, I, I would have said Rocket 3. I love the Rocket. We've already spoken well, well, about well, the Well, Rocket 3 against the V-Twin. It's Rocket 3, isn't it? Out of those two. Yeah, but the new V4 Diablo. I mean, Christ. We haven't tried it. It looks? it looks intriguing. I can't wait to try yeah. it. You love that engine in the yeah, Multistrada, Multistrada, don't you? Yeah, so, yeah. And, and lots and, of people and love all, it. And all of the yeah. sort of reviews, which are people, the people went out to Dubai to ride it. Yeah. I mean, they're like, it's almost, is, oh. it, is it a super naked? Is it a cruiser? Yeah, I saw that. It looks unbelievable. It looks that, unbelievable. that closed road, yeah, yeah. Where it just literally switched back, wasn't it? That. I know, That's it amazing. looks amazing. So <laughs> yeah. I, I think it's too, too early to call. I think the new Ducati V4 yeah. That could be our looks, cruise. Did the TTS do a supercharger conversion? <laughs> I, don't know. I don't think you'll need it, to be fair. But it, look, uh, it looks amazing. So we'll, we'll reserve judgment. Yeah, we're going to do the comparison. We're doing the comparison. We're doing the comparison I've, I've so. actually booked the Rocket 3 in. That, that's in the calendar. Ducati, yeah. when they've got the Diablo, I think they've got one now, actually. Yeah, okay. So I'll contact them. And we're going to do a comparison between the Rocket 3 and the Diablo. Yeah. And we'll let you know what we think is yeah. the best out of the two. But the Rocket 3 is a bike absolutely love. I, I can do, see yeah. myself definitely owning one of those at some point. I agree. So it could be the Diablo, could be the... It's going to be a really exam. good Whether comparison. they're supposed to be, I mean, I know that everyone privately yeah. compares the two as yeah. the direct impact. Whether the manufacturers view life like that, I've no yeah. idea. Well, but it's a performance cruiser, isn't it? Yeah, it is, and yeah. It's those two. There's yeah. the only two real performance exactly. cruisers. Exactly. But looking at the recent launch know, the um, videos, the Diavel looks, looks yeah. like it's going to handle better than, it, the, it, than the Rocket. It's, light, it's a lot lighter. A lot lighter. Like 80, 60, 60, 60, 70 it looks kilos good. lighter And they're both... Similar price, obviously yeah. hugely expensive, yeah. but interesting. We'll yeah. let you know. I, I can't wait. But I can't wait either. Stay tuned. We yep. will be doing a full comparison yep. next month. I, I think so. I think it's April. Yeah, it might yep. be May, okay. but it's coming. It's Fine. coming. Shited nine. <laughs> Shited nine. Shited nine. Do you think there is a compromise between adventure bikes and tourers? Do you think that one is more versatile than the other? Do you think there is a point where bikes get loaded up with so much touring equipment that they become a hazard? Uh, it's an. I mean, it's just, it's, this is a little bit controversial with the old adventure bike subject, isn't it? I mean, adventure for me, an adventure bike is a bike you use on the road, do a lot of miles, but you can also go off road on it. Yeah. Gravel lanes, whatever. But soft there's some road. Soft, soft road. Soft road. Soft, soft off road. Now. I don't think anyone would disagree with that. No. Whether they do it or not, I well, don't know. That's, but that's, that's, but that's, that's the point, isn't that's it? That's the point. Yeah. Whereas a touring bike is obviously not designed for off road. Seventeen-inch front wheels, road-based suspension. It's for going on the tarmac. Yeah. So, so what's the question? Do you think that the, tour, the, the adventure bikes have become a bit compromised over a touring bike? Yeah, Is that really exactly. the question? And, exactly. and, and are they dangerous because they've got too much tech? I don't, I don't think they're dangerous because well, they've got too... Well, just all loaded too, out of all the panniers. Well, I think thing. they become a bit heavy. But, you're careful. But yeah, you're yeah, careful. Yeah. I don't think it becomes hazardous. No. And I think some of the systems that they've now got with the anti-blind spot and a lot of the electronics, system. adaptive crews, I guess that makes it safer in a way, doesn't yeah, it? Not yeah, more yeah, dangerous. Yeah. So I don't, I don't think it's a danger thing. But, but do, do I think they are people buying adventure bikes when they really should be buying touring bikes? I think that I think there is a risk that they do that. And I one of the things about adventure bikes that I am not particularly fond of on the road, if you're doing big miles, is the centre of gravity is somewhat higher yeah. than a touring bike, which to me means that you're making a fairly big compromise. And if you rarely or never go off road in any way, why would you want that compromise? Yeah. Now I'm sure. I'll be shot down in flames because there'll be loads of people that own KTMs and GSs that say it handles amazingly and they've been well, on the beat. Yeah, that, that's the thing, isn't it? Like the GS, yeah. they sell, you know, GS is Massive numbers. Selling, but massive numbers. Yeah, exactly. And there is a reason for that. And they are good. And it's if you a think, bloody good and, and another thing that I think that sways towards the adventure bike, perhaps over a conventional tourer, particularly with the UK roads, and you've got potholes everywhere and yeah, yeah, shitty road roads, surfaces, yeah, really bad yeah, surfaces. Yeah. And actually, yeah. maybe there's an argument that we all need adventure right. bikes because, yeah. you know, it might save you because of some of the poor roads That's that we've true. got. So yeah. I think probably the best answer is... If you fancy an adventure bike and you're going to do touring, they do it brilliantly. Get what you want. Go for it. Get what if you, you want. want to. Personally, I would go for a touring bike if I was touring. That would yeah. be more Tory. But I don't think that people getting an adventure bike means that they're wrong. I mean, the uh, the Kawasaki 
H2SX, the new one. Yep. I mean, it's amazing, isn't what it? What a great bike. Yeah, Definitely. I mean, I had that for a while. It's absolutely fantastic. Yeah. The XR, BMW XR. You amazing know, bike. Uh, over the, the GS. Totally agree. The K1600, amazing bike. The Pan European, yeah, I guess you could say yeah, it's a touring bike. Yeah, really yeah, good bike. Wing, the R1250 mm. uh, RT, BMW bike amazing touring bike i know that people you know they're an acquired taste looking at because they're a little bit enormous but yeah. you know they're great bikes aren't yeah. they but equally the gs really good bike i, GS think, I think the, a great new, bike. the new touring bikes with the nine the 19 inch front wheels not the ones with the 21 are definitely more off-road focused mm. yeah. but the, but the ones with the 19 adventure on adventure bikes they, they do handle very well they do you know they, they are good road bikes yeah. as well so. and a lot of them have got adaptive suspension anyway so you can they dial have, it all yeah, in anyway you, can't you, so it's a really yeah. interesting i think it's this comes out to personal, personal preference. preference yeah what, what exactly. you get what you want get what i you do want. think that adventure bikes are a, a, a probably in this day and age a better financial investment because the market yeah, is greater probably. they probably hold their value better yeah, don't they probably yeah you know yeah, so you're right, if you're looking yeah. at it that's from hard point. nose numbers i think it's probably yeah, a better yeah, better, that's better a good isn't point. It? yeah cathal lennon love it lads can't wait one of those if you were both given four days away for a trip where and what bikes go on over to you for this one uh, well, two things. I think well, I open a can. something that I've never done before that I would love to do is I'd like to get the overnight ferry from Portsmouth down to northern Spain, Santander, Bilbao, and then take the 690 and have a ride around, Tune around the no Bicos. northern Spain, decent weather, quiet, yeah, lovely roads. Yeah, yeah. I'd also like to do this similar thing where I trailer down my 690 to the Alps in the summer and do some Alps riding in decent weather, that also really, really appeals. Mm. So I think for me, it's on the 690 for now. I mean, I think it will change in time, but I've never done that and I'd really like to do that. That sounds awesome, doesn't it? It does, well, yeah. We've spoken about that before, haven't we? Yeah, and that just, was something we... And just, you know, set up in a hotel and then dump all your gear and I've then just go out for day I've trips. I've never done the Picos either. No. And we were going to... The, yeah. the year of COVID, we were booked on the ferry. Me and Womble were yeah. going down with the... Yeah, uh, yeah. We had a Fireblade and the new S1000RR. And it all got cancelled. All booked to the Picos. Because yeah. of COVID, gutted. it was written off. Gutted, yeah. Absolutely gutted, but I think that sounds incredible. The 690s yeah. on those little mountainous exactly. roads. So after this has been published, this video, we're going to put a GoFundMe page up, aren't we? <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> That's the trouble. The ferry is so mind. damn expensive, yeah. isn't it? But yeah, that would be great. So I think for me as well. I, yeah, I'd really? It, all of yeah. us. Well, now yeah. Alex, Alex has got Supermoto. You've got the 690. Oh, Womble's got the 701. I've got all four of us. It'd be amazing. Can you on, imagine? On a Hoonage holiday on the 690s around amazing. the mountain It'd be roads. amazing. It'd be oh. so good. It'd be so good. Yeah, that, that's for me as well. Sign me up. Where do I sign? Exactly. This is from Stuart Carver. Would, would be good to hear your best biking memories. Could be the best road, best group of friends you rode with, best locations you visited or whatever. Might make a nice chat topic. Best biking memories. I think for me, my best biking memories and probably some of my worst biking memories as well, was the trip me and Womble did round, round, uh, round mm. Spain. Yeah, it looked good. We, we, we did... You ride back from Spain as well, did you? Yeah, we got the ferry to Bilbao, yeah. and then we rode through... Uh, I can't think of the mountain range there now. Not the Pyrenees. Pyrenees, not the Pyrenees, Pyrenees sorry, yeah. Pyrenees. Rode through the Pyrenees, then came up, did the B500 in Germany, and then and come yeah. back home. Yeah. Over a space of four days, we did like five... Yeah. 500 miles a day. I remember we were riding all day through the Picos. At five o'clock at night, we pulled up, looked at the uh, map, and we had 300 miles to go to. We were at the hotel oh. with books. <laughs> so it was five o'clock in the evening. We'd be riding on the, through, the, through, the, through the mountain, through the Pyrenees all day long. Stop, look at the, look at the, and it's 300 miles. Until Another, your hotel. 300? Another 300? Are you sure? Miles. Another yeah. three... it, was, it was something like that, 250. It's oh. in that we did it, we did it as a oh video series of this. That's like a hell of a way. That's hours yeah. and hours. Well, it, and hours. Was, it was like five hours. We got there at one o'clock in the morning to the hotel. <sighs> I bet you were in agony, weren't you? We were in that, well, my ass was, I was in agony. I was on yeah. the Super Duke, one was on his Toronto. But that, you know, even though there was some real hardship yeah, yeah. on that trip, yeah. it sort of added to the experience. When you look back at it, it was just, yeah, yeah. I was chatting to Womble about it the other day and uh, yeah. it was it was an incredible, yeah. incredible trip that was. But so for that, that's it for me. What no, okay. You? Well, for me, it's, it's difficult to answer. There's so many, you know, I've been riding for so many years. I think I've done a few rides up to the Isle of Man TT and I think they're probably up there with really? the greatest. Yeah, yeah just, just the whole thing, yet. just packing up all the gear, riding up to Haitian, getting a ferry across, bunch of friends, 
you know, it's, it's really good fun. Mm. Yeah. You're doing it this year. You're doing it again, yeah, this year. Yeah. Well, you but may do a little video diary. I might do a video trip, diary, I think, trip, yeah. Trip and, TT, yeah, maybe. exactly. It's just a really good trip. You know, forget the TT and the races, which, of course, are amazing, but just the whole thing is just a great experience. Mm. And if you get the weather right, which you can do, you know, start to finish, it's really good fun. Mm. Yeah. There we go. Yeah. Thanks, Stuart. Great question. So next one. This is the last question, actually. Whether yeah. we're going to get all these, we've been chatting a while, haven't we? Uh, we've got a takeaway coming in. Exactly. <laughs> we've got to get moving. This is from Derek Soul. After all the screaming going on with you and Greg on the pillion ride, this is this is this is on the uh, KCC <laughs> universe in the gold. Oh my God. Do you admire people who put their trust in a rider to enjoy the journey? I uh, do. Gillian the Pillion has a full license of her own and an enduro bike, but still loves to ride as a passenger regularly. Cheers. With love. Love the channel. So, yeah, that's... Uh, well, you oh. didn't go on the back of me, did you? You basically oh. stitched me up and said, you've got to try <laughs> and see what they're like from a Pillion perspective. You didn't go on the back at all. I, so in answer, I massive admiration for people yeah. that do it. I find it really quite... I mean, particularly if you're a rider yourself and then you're still happy to go... I didn't like it. Yeah, Not yeah, that you I didn't, didn't... Well, you no, did do it. You did take, I didn't like it you did take the mick a little bit <laughs> at one point, which was a little bit frightening, but I, I didn't like it at all. I, yeah. I went on the pillion with uh, Steve Plater. I think oh, of course you did, when the radiator yeah, broke yeah. on your bike, wasn't well, it? It was on the S1000 XR. single R. Look, S1000 R. Oh, was, it, was it? Okay, thank you. Yeah, there's a hole in the radiator. We had to get to the next camera point. There's no other spare bikes at the time, so I had to go on the back of Steve Plater. And uh, I actually really enjoyed it. Did you? Yeah, I, I thought... Because it, it, it's a bit of a twisty section, and you're sort of leaning, with, and it's actually quite a lot of enjoyment on the back, yeah. like leaning with the bike. You know, I actually yeah. thought it was really good. Uh, yeah. I mean, that's no, Steve Plater think, riding, though, not well, Steve Plater exactly. riding. Well, no, it wasn't that. In fact, I trust you completely. I think what was worrying me more is I know how much the handling of a bike is upset by a pillion. Yeah, yeah, yeah. When I'm riding, yeah, and yeah. I've got a pillion, which I don't have very often these days. And so I think that was in the back of my mind, knowing that the handling shot and you were pushing on a little bit and there's not a lot of weight over the front. I just felt petrified, to be it's honest. It's a massive case I, I know, I don't, I don't care. I don't care. It's to the road. I don't care. And it was freezing road. as well, which didn't help. Yeah, yeah, it was so like I was worried about the fact the conditions it? weren't great. So that wasn't, that wasn't helping. It was a straight bit. But in answer, road. I have massive admiration. It's a, if you it's go a, pillion, it's a control thing. It is a control thing. If you go pillion regularly, all hats and all credit to you. Because I don't think I could do it. I was surprised how enjoyable it was on the back. Really? Yeah, I was like, because you have to lean with the bike. Oh, of course, yeah. You know when you've got a pillion, you sit something they yeah, fight you don't they fight like, it exactly but if you lean with the bike it was actually, so i think what we should yeah. do then just to prove that john's not bullshitting <laughs> is back. in the summer we're going to get a suitable bike and i'm going to take you Rocket out three or, or the one with the apple. and you are going <laughs> pillion and oh, then we're going to do a video immediately into. after we stop and you can tell your audience whether you enjoyed it or not and i'll do all i can to make sure don't you really, don't bro. enjoy it <laughs> Oh, that's Get a great idea. We'll we do that, we'll do Derek, that. and then, we'll, then we'll see. Then we'll see. Yeah. Brilliant. So that is it. Thank you, Derek, for the questions. So, really, really um, good questions, actually. Yeah, yeah I really, really very, yeah, yeah, really very, really don't they? Really, yeah, very, really good. Yeah, it's good. So if you got, I'm not sure our answers are any good, but the questions, <laughs> good were, questions good. were good <laughs> anyway. So if you want to, got a question for me or Greg or both of us, put them in the put the comments in sure. this video and then I'll pick them up and we'll ask them on the next one because Perfect. I want to make these maybe a monthly or six yeah, yeah. weekly yeah. and we can just do like a bit of a Q&A, a bit of bike news. Bit of an update. Bit of an update. Yeah, we can talk. I've got racing with Alex. There's, you the know, the bikes update. will be back on the road soon. I've done a lot of work getting mine yeah. ready. You're going to get yours ready. I've got five We're bikes nearly there now, ready. sort of middle of March-ish, almost kind it's of. not going to be much longer, Not too it? much longer and uh, we'll be back. And maybe we'll do a few oh. antics on a Wednesday evening and yeah. a bit of an update on that. And We've all got Supermoto. Supermoto fun. Yeah, exactly. Or maybe some, even some of the bikes that you get delivered. We can yeah. get those out on Wednesday, yeah, can't yeah, we? Yeah. And, and we've actually got next month, we've got a big mega test with the Japanese Super Naked. That's going to be good. We've got my first Yamaha. I've got borrowed from, from Yamaha Brilliant. UK. So we've yeah. got an MT, MT10. I don't know if it's the SP or the standard one, but it's an MT10, new MT10. Yeah. We've got the CB1000R yeah. and yeah. we've got the GSX S1000. Brilliant. So we've got a comparison with the big Japanese. So it's, yeah. it's a Japanese shootout between those three bikes. And talking about overrated bikes, oh, sorry, underrated bikes. <laughs> overrated. Not over, <laughs> underrated. They're a li not the MT10, but I think they're a little bit overlooked now, aren't they, with the other yeah, Supernakes? Yeah, that, that's uh, going to yeah, be good. Yeah. And so I'm sure they'll be really The best good. Japanese Supernakes. That'll be good. So we've yeah. got a comparison with those three. And that, that's next month yeah. coming. And it's my first Yamaha. So I, I haven't been an MT. I read it. 
Nice. No. It was 2016. Well, I've only ridden, ridden the MT10 10. once. It was the SP, but it was a long time ago, yeah. and I'm really looking forward yeah, to trying that again. It's, actually, it's yeah, brilliant. should yeah, be good. Yeah. Could, beautiful sound as well, isn't that it? That could be one of the. We should have mentioned that as maybe one of the most underrated bikes. It could well be actually. Yeah. yeah, it could well. So be. that's to come. I've got the GSXS ride to come. We've got the Diavel versus the Rocket. Yeah, think, and we've got a few other good comparisons lined yeah, yeah. up as well. Yeah, yeah. Well, you're for, uh, falling apart, mate. You're falling apart. Falling apart. Too many ciders. Too many margaritas. But uh, I hope you've enjoyed the little chat. Like I say, this will become a regular feature of the channel and let Very us good. know if you can think of a better title than Talking Bikes. I'm sure they can. Because there could be some copyright issues there. <laughs> <laughs> but thanks for watching, guys, and uh, see you in the next video. Cheers. Cheers.